Hello, and welcome to Real Life, Real Beauty, a podcast about art, real life, and the story behind both. There's joy to be found, something bigger, like the feeling of not being home yet. It's all around us, and while we don't have answers, join us as we chase the echoes of an unseen kingdom. I'm your host, Kale Summerlin, and welcome to episode two. Today, I have with me Clayton Powell, aka Claytonic, who is a composer, producer, mix engineer, and synthesis from Chattanooga, Tennessee. He's also a DJ, a mighty fine banjo player, and one of my best friends since childhood. Today's episode is titled, There's No I in Community. Before you try to spell it out in your head, let's jump into Clayton's story and find out why he does what he does. So Clayton, how's it going, man? It's going great. Thank you for having me on your podcast. Yeah, I appreciate you so much for being here. It's Um, a joy to do this with you. Yeah. Okay. So I got a question to start us off. So what is your earliest like memory of us? Like crazy memory, just first random thing that comes to mind. You know what? I can't think of an early, early memory, but mid high school for both of us, I had a crazy idea that I wanted to make a milk jug raft and go on a camping trip on a homemade raft. And it took several years to collect all of the milk jugs and make it happen. But we floated our way about five miles down the river, and it was just an absolute blast. And also a crazy idea, and I do not recommend it. <laughs> oh, no, it was, it was totally worth it. We went five miles in five hours, it was, and it broke at the end. There was no return journey. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. We loaded it on a car, it just <laughs> carted it out. <laughs> that, that is a good memory. Um, well, yeah, dude, it's so, so great to have you here. So last show, we had um, Linda Baskin here and a painter from Dayton, Tennessee. And you guys, and we mentioned that um, you guys were in a show together called Abstractapalooza, if I'm saying that right. Yes, you are. Uh Yes. And at that show, I remember you released your single, Not Alone. No, We Are Not Alone. Yep, yep. Yes. Um, So, dude, what do you remember about that experience? Oh, that was a great experience. And that was a very personal one. Uh, When we think about art uh, and as an professional artist, you're not always, you know, not everything is directly tied to you. It's personal, you care about it, but not every story that you tell is your own personal story. But We Are Not Alone is a part of my personal story. I've, you know, struggled for a while with, you know, the feeling of community, um, trying to figure out how to best make friends and reach out. And just having a strong desire that I don't want to walk through life alone, but feeling very alone. Mm. So the story of We Are Not Alone is coming, me coming to the realization that I'm not alone uh, and that, uh, well, this is something that my mom used to say, that her grandmother used to say, if you want to have a friend, be a friend. And that really has informed, I guess, sort of my methodology for creating and building relationships. And I guess in a way, even how I share the gospel, Um, Mm. just that I want to be relationship first and that I want to prioritize others in my life over myself and that the act of reaching out reciprocates. And it's through serving that I can find a sense of community and not be alone yeah it's like about the relationship it is it really is it really is absolutely i remember i remember i so first of all that's probably one of my favorite songs of yours just being honest like i think i think it's great thank you um and not because of this reason but i also remember that you you asked a couple of us guys if we could come and record background vocals for it yes Uh, and i remember yes (laughs) what was that line we were trying to get like there was one line we couldn't get Oh, I don't remember which one it was now, but yes, it was many, many, many takes. Many takes. Um, <laughs> it was that was so much fun though because we were all crowded super close together around the microphone like this. And, yes. Um, yes. <laughs> and uh, it was it was so great. And I remember you told me um, you told me like you wanted to have because the song's about you, like kind of finding community or yeah, finding mm-hmm. community. You you wanted us to be part of the song. And that just kind of meant a lot to me. Um, yeah, that also, was, it was very important to me. And it, no one else would know that the background vocalists are 
friends of mine, unless you watch this podcast and now you know, uh, but it made a difference to me. And that was something that was very important as I was you know, sharing with the world this idea of just seek community and uh, in a in a way, do people be willing to go out and be vulnerable and throw yourself out there? Um, yeah, yeah. I remember. Uh, I remember you came over one day and I and I had asked you. I was like, okay, dude, what's the story behind this song? Because I always loved love to know the story behind the songs. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you're talking to me, and you said this phrase where you said, "There's no I in community." And we were both like, "Yeah, it's so good." And we're like, "Wait, <laughs> yeah, there is. There's an I in community." <laughs> there totally <laughs> is. Yeah, an attempt to be pithy that sort of backfired, but now it's just funny. <laughs> yeah, now it's just funny. So yeah, yeah. there's the there's the title of the show. Um, yes. Yeah. We we still say it to one another. We do since then. I'm yes. pretty sure the uh, the community thing on the community little folder on my phone is spelled without an I. So. There, yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dude. So on your so on your um, on your website in your bio, you say that all music is a story. You say that art is my way to tell the stories of my life and stories altogether fanciful. My art is not a factual account, but it is always truthful. Um. So, like, what do you mean by this? So, take a common story, like. Let's say the Lord of the Rings. Now, is it true that Frodo went to Mount Doom and destroyed the ring? Yes, of course it's true. Is that factual? Is that real? No, it's not a fact. It's fiction or fantasy. Mm -hmm. But it is true. And it does have a real impact on the readers in the real world who follow his story. And so that's the best way I can describe it. It's not always about telling facts. Sometimes perception, and I'm not saying you should go around lying, (laughs) but sometimes perception is worth more than the truth. And causing a positive impact, causing someone to experience something that will change them, that will help them live their life, help them love better. Yeah. That is what it's all about. And that doesn't always happen through facts. One of the beautiful things about art and about music is that it can take us out of ourselves Mm -hmm. sometimes. And, you know, by seeing, you know, reading the Lord of the Rings, you know, you're going to another world for a while and you're seeing people work through their own problems in a different way. And it can help inform than how you go through your own problems. Yeah, dude, that, that reminds me of C.S. Lewis. This is a paraphrase, but C.S. Lewis said um, that something he hoped to do in writing fairy stories was to impart truths to adults um, or, like, grown-ups. I don't, I don't remember how he phrased it, but, like, yeah. um, the phrase he said was he wants to steal past those watchful dragons. So by taking, like you said, people out of themselves. Mm-hmm. And if you put... If you put, you have a different context, different, the story is the channel for the truth. The truth remains the same. The story Mm -hmm. just makes it look different, even if it did happen or doesn't happen. Sure. Um, Sure. So, dude, that is such a cool idea. Um, And I think sometimes we can be so guarded that we don't allow ourselves to learn from each other, uh, from a mentor even. We can spend, you know, years and years in school and never actually learn anything. Uh, One of the amazing things about art is that it's pretty disarming, you know, if you're just like, wow, I love this beat, you know, and then you listen to it for six months and then you go, wait, what is that guy saying? And that affects you. And it subliminally and subconsciously before you think about the lyrics, it affects you. And it's not just language. What I love about music is that it's a combination of of this amazing thing, music, with this other amazing thing, language. And when those come together and marry, it can be in a just an incredibly impactful moment. So, dude, so what what do you want to so whenever you're making music, like how do you what feels right? Like, what are you are you? trying to impart something is there a time where like you just let the you just let it just happens and you're just there to witness it like you know sometimes it does feel like an out-of-body experience 
Yeah. Uh, sometimes it feels, you know, it feels like the definition of inspiration, like coming from the gods or, you know, like an angel came and just dropped it on you and, you know, it's your muse and it all just happens. But most of the time, it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, it is not easy to create. And most of the time, it's very hard to accept what you have created. Mm. When I sit down to write music, sometimes nothing comes out. But it is through patience and through perseverance and through practice that I am able to create things that I believe have value in and of themselves as beautiful or in and of themselves as fun to listen to or because they invoke an emotional response because they tell a story outright or just because I like them for something I can't define. Yeah, I think that's I think that's one reason I love music. Like you said, it does all of those things. It doesn't have to be any one thing. Um, something something I try to avoid in this podcast. I'm trying to avoid by creating this podcast is I'm trying to draw attention to like, hey, here's art and it's awesome, <laughs> but also like we're not here to define it. We do not have the answers. And honestly, like trying to put something in a box like that can kind of like take away from it. So it's really cool Absolutely. to see, like, like you said, art, like, what is it? It's beautiful. It's a, it has an emotional response. It can be a story. Um, and it's like, it's, it's all of those things. So, um, another thing you said on your bio, you said, my art is my life and my life is my art. And it kind of has this like sense of honesty, like this authenticity of like, you're, you are sure. presenting yourself through your art. You are. Like, this is what your, your way of, like, expressing something that's, like, passionate to you, something that you want to get out there. Yeah, I, I would not be who I am without pursuing a career in music. Um, and I would not be able to pursue a career in music if music and, and art wasn't just, wasn't just a part of who I am. Uh, I was trying to find a clever way to say that, and I'm not sure I can expound upon it very well <laughs> right now hey, either. That's, that's great, man. But pretty much every choice I have made in life thus far comes down to realizing that I, I have a little bit of talent and a whole lot of desire mm -hmm. to be in the arts and to work in music. And so I pursue it. On my own as an artist and uh, through my studies, I'm a student at Berkeley Online, um, getting a degree that I'll earn in several more years of study. Um, but yeah, it's it's all about the art for me. Yeah. What kind of um, what kind of. So I had this I, I borrowed this idea from Andrew Peterson that there's like this resistance that can like face that we can face in our art, hmm. um, like what kind of? So okay, I'm gonna ask a double. I'm gonna ask a double question here. So okay. what kind of like? <laughs> um, and you might have already answered this, but what kind of resistance have you faced when making your art? Like what kind of like trials? Like what kind of things are trying to stop you? But on the flip side, what joys have you found like through pursuing making music that you wouldn't have otherwise found or you wouldn't have thought to find? That's an excellent question. It's an excellent set of questions. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so resistance that I've felt. There is only so many hours in a day. Mm -hmm. And I think more than anything, a resistance I have found is that I do not have the time that I wish I did to devote to creation and performance of music. We all got a pair of taxes, unfortunately. <laughs> right? <laughs> you gotta Absolutely. make the money. <laughs> you gotta make the money, you gotta pay the bills. Uh, it is always the dream of the artist, painter, or whoever, that 
you know, the making of the money is also the making of the art. But for most of us, and myself included, we're not quite there yet. Yeah. And we may never be. It may always be sort of a hobby. And, you know, I try to, I try to be okay with that. I think one of the struggles that I have, the resistances I find in art, is letting it be what it is. Mm. I Sometimes this is a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing. But I come to create art or I come to write music and I say, I want to write a pop song. And then some sort of folk ballad comes out and I think, <laughs> well, that's not what I wanted, you know, but maybe that was the story that I had in my heart if I didn't have it in my mind. And, but on the flip side, those unexpected moments are some of the joys, you know, hmm. when you sit down and you just start creating and I like to think of it as, you know, chasing a rabbit trail. Yeah. Uh, and some of the, you know, you could call it a flow state, if you will, but I'll just sit down and I'll say, okay, I'm going to start with this. And I have a basic idea of an instrument I want to create or, uh, you know, just a basic rhythmic pattern, melodic pattern. And I start into it. And then all of a sudden I'm just thinking, oh, I'll just go do this and then I'll go do that. And then I look up like four hours later, but I have this amazing piece of music in front of me or at least partially constructed piece of music. And I, I never would have found that if I had forced myself to only do and only think in very specific ways and in, in the context of where I started. Dude, that is awesome. Do you have any last thoughts about like how... I don't know how Jesus has met you in your art and how you mentioned this earlier about like the community aspect, the relational aspect of how, how you can spread the gospel that way by like knowing people individually. Mm -hmm. That is one way that, that is one way that Christ has met me. Uh, that day in the studio when I got you and some others into the, into the studio to record, that was one, one time when, yes, I was building community, but I think that was also Christ's gift to me. Yeah. that my art was helping me reach out and helping me develop friendships and deepen friendships. Dude, that is so cool. I'm so glad to hear it. Um, before we go, I'm going to go ahead and put a plug out there. I noticed that you have downloads on your website. You've created some sound sets. I, yeah. I'm saying yeah. it wrong. No, it's a, it's a small <laughs> sample pack. I, I took a, uh, a little instrument and uh, just a little hand drum and I sampled it and created the instrument sets for uh, Ableton Sampler or Reasons NNXT. So if you are a creator out there, you can go to my website and download those files, and i love to see what you make with it. Yes. On that note, also be sure to check out Clayton has these awesome coffee shop beats. They are just him playing some chill music. Go to a coffee shop, do your homework, um, unless you don't do that sort of thing. Either way, go to a <laughs> coffee shop and listen to the music. Um, it's on YouTube. Um, and with that, thank you so much for being here, Clayton. Um, yes, thank you again for having me. Yeah, uh, listeners, please check out his stuff. Like, it's it's awesome. Um, I love it. And also, if, you, if you're if you feeling so led, um, also head on to patreon.com slash claytonic. And if you feel like supporting him, um, be, you can give a contribution there. Uh, with that, if you want to hear more thoughts about art, real life, and the kingdom of Christ, join us next time for more artists. Um, our next artist um, might have something to do with the wizarding world. I'll leave you with that. And uh, be sure to follow me on social media and share this podcast with your friends if you liked it. Um, and Spotify listeners, I created a playlist called Real Life, Real Beauty Playlist. Be sure to look it up, and I'll put a couple Clayton songs on there. You can go check out his stuff. Um, and until later, be inspired. Support artists that you know, make art yourself, and integrate some rest from the love of Christ into your routine. Seek out beauty in real life. Ooh.